All right. Uh, what's up, guys? Welcome back to 4 to 4. Thanks for checking back in. If you haven't checked yet, check our last episode, episode 5, where we talked with Dustin Watton. Um, but this episode for episode six, we're su- 6, we're super excited to uh, introduce our next two guests with uh, me, Pete, and Callaway. We're introducing Maggie and Casey. Uh, we'll let them take away their introduction. There we go. <laughs> hey, everyone. Um, I'm Casey Shaneline. I'm from Seattle, Washington. I'm a super proud Coug, aka I went to <laughs> Washington State University. And for those of you who don't know the West Coast, it's not the purple school. Um, I started my professional career in the Philippines, and then I went to Europe last year with a team in France where I met Maggie, and then this year we stayed in France and together, but for a different team. And I'm Maggie. I am from a really small town in South Carolina called Camden. I went to NC State, and I played one year in Greece, and then last year in France, this year in France again. Awesome. Thanks well, for being on, guys. Uh, Cypher, who's our second guest, kind of connected us with you two. And anyone that's got a stamp of approval with Cypher it has a stamp of <laughs> approval from me because I love that dude and love his character. So thanks again for coming on and uh, welcome. Thanks for having us. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and definitely shout out Cypher. Big man with the big paws. Um, that's right. <laughs> that's pause. My favorite quote. pause that's what i said it's my I favorite know. quote for sight well, um all right <laughs> all right well let's get this started uh if you guys just want to kind of walk through like your journey how you got started in volleyball what took you from being somebody just picking up a volleyball to basically not being able to pass a free ball to now being a professional <laughs> app still today <laughs> um so i grew up like i said in a really small town in the south So, like, I did not grow up watching volleyball at all. I think maybe I was introduced to maybe I would watch, like, beach volleyball in the Olympics sometimes. Um, And then I don't even remember. Maybe when I was, like, 11, there was, like, developmental volleyball. So I started doing that. Hated it. Absolutely hated it. I remember just, like, crying every single practice because it was just so bad. Um, so I really, I love soccer and I love basketball. And then I think in like seventh grade, when you could play middle school volleyball is when I really started to enjoy it. Um, and then my whole career was just kind of like, uh, not really having any guidance of what I was doing. And so just kind of different people telling me, Oh, I think this will be good for you. I think this will be good for you. Um, the college recruiting experience, like, I think I went on, like, two visits, maybe, like, just really not sure what's going on, you know, uh, my dad played football, so he didn't really quite understand the whole, like, club volleyball world, and kind of, you know, you're kind of responsible for reaching out to schools and going on visits and doing all that work yourself, so I, th- I think I got really, really lucky that I even ended up at NC State, like in the ACC, Um, played there for four years, and then I didn't even know that pro volleyball even existed until we had like a coaching change my senior year, and we were having meetings, and they're just kind of like, so what do you think you're going to do after you graduate, and you know, I was like, I guess, you know, get a job, whatever, and they're like, we really think that you should try to play professionally, and I again, had no idea, never even been out of the country before. Um, So I graduated early in December and I remember being like on my college graduation trip to Harry Potter world (laughs) with my family. And I get a call from my coach and she's like, hey, this agency does these exposure tours. Um, They need an extra setter, like, would you be interested? And I was like, yeah, sure, I hung up the phone told my parents, hey, I'm going to go to Europe, and it was in, like, six days or something. So <laughs> I had to go goes. get my passport, and I just, like, went for it. Um, and then I think I signed in to play in Greece, like, the following spring. Um, and then I actually ended up getting another email after the exposure tour um, about the World University Games and invited me to play in World University Games. Um, and I remember thinking it was like a joke, like a scam. I was like, this can't be real. 
And so um, did that, like did the whole like training in California with like USA and that whole thing. Um, went to Taiwan, did World University Games. <clears throat> Coolest experience of my life. Like all sports from all over the world, you know, athlete village, that whole thing. Really cool. Was injured. Then two weeks later, went off my injury, went to my season in Greece, which I'm sure if Matt told you his stories, like Greece is just on a whole other level. Um, did really well volleyball wise there, like mentally was a really huge struggle. Um, and then I ended up getting an injury, I think that February. Um, and that's just like a whole nother story. Like, our coach wanted me to keep playing, so he, like, didn't fully tell me what the doctor was saying type of thing. So I played through the rest of my season, um, went and did another USA type of thing, which Casey did the same thing the next year. And the trainer at the USA thing was like, okay, I don't feel comfortable with you playing. Like, I really think that you need to, like, see a doctor, blah, blah, go home, get MRI. They're like, you need surgery. So then ended up taking a whole year off. And then recouping, coming back, being in France, and then now in France again. So that's kind of my whole volleyball. <laughs> that's it. It's just that. <laughs> quite, quite a bit to unpack there, I feel like. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> some, yeah. Something I definitely didn't want to, like, forget to mention, though, was, like, uh, you said something about it just kind of being being lonely overseas, and I thought it was kind of interesting with the NBA bubble, them being stuck mm-hmm. there. There was that, like, uh, like I don't know if it was a tweet or a post on Instagram yeah. about... I know which one you're talking uh, about. Yeah, I know what you're talking like, about. I think I shared it. About... I feel like almost anybody that's played or sees shared that because it's just like such a reality and it's very rarely mm-hmm. talked about. And, you know, I just feel like part of why I wanted to be a part of this show is to make sure people understand like what they're doing when they head over there. Um, mm-hmm. Cause uh, you know, when I went to Romania, I actually went with another American and literally within 48 hours, he's like, this isn't for me and went home. Oh my gosh. And it's like, if you just, you know, that's a perfect example of people maybe boosting the expectations or just not, you know, just, oh, you know, I'm going for a great experience. It's like, hey, man, it's work. It it can be a great experience, but it's not just like sunshines and rainbow, you know? Yeah, (laughs) definitely not. Yeah, Yeah, that's definitely like, for me, the hardest part is it's never been necessarily the volleyball part. It's just the mental aspect of it. Being away from home, missing out on so much. And like after my injury and sitting out for a year, I really had to sit down and be like, okay, how committed am I to doing this? Because it's, and it's not just like, you know, four months, especially in Europe, it's 10 long months of being over here. Um, So it's definitely a huge commitment. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That that also reminds me, sorry, I'm hogging the mic. Um, it reminds me of the, the Bulls documentary where I think it was Dennis Rodman was like, I'll play basketball for free. You got to pay me for the rest of the shit you know, yeah. <laughs> that I'm dealing with. You know, it's like, I love, I love playing. I'll, I'll, that's, I'm never happier than when I'm on the court, but like, you know, win or lose, just competing. It's fun for me. Um, it's just the rest of the stuff that it's like, Oh, this is why I'm getting paid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. True. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like Callaway said, we definitely have a lot to unpack there. But uh, <laughs> Casey, let's go through you as well, so we can just unpack it all at once. Sure. Yeah. Good idea. Mine, mine's pretty standard, I would say. Like, I'm six five, so I'm really tall for a female, especially. And so, all growing up, my parents were like shoved me in every sport imaginable. <laughs> Um, which I'm so grateful for now. And basketball was really my main sport, but I think I just burned out on that. And so volleyball in like sixth grade was really new and exciting. Um, and so I, I fell in love with it. And in high school, um, my parents, (laughs) my parents had to really encourage me to like, kind of 
try new things all my whole life. Like I was on a YMCA team, volleyball team, and I loved it. I was with my friends. It was a great time. My parents fortunately could see like potential and I'm sure my coaches were also talking to my parents. And so they encouraged me to try out for like a good traveling volleyball team. They had to encourage me to talk to coaches, college coaches, um, The recruiting process was very overwhelming for me. Um, Just, I was stubborn. I didn't want to do it. And most people think it's glamorous. Like, you've got all these coaches and schools, like, kissing your hand and foot. But trying to make that decision as a 15-year-old is just crazy. Um, Can't imagine. So, and I'm, like, so thankful that I ended up where I did. But it was a long road to get there. Um, and I had such an amazing experience at Washington State and um, was really fortunate to be able to, like, try out for the women's national team and, like, make a few college national teams um, for two summers. And then my senior year, I blew my knee out. And so my plan was to play professionally right away, do a half season after Um, my senior year my senior season and then instead I recovered for a year and I was a student coach and so I could play and rehab um, at the university and then I did a half season well for them it's full but in the Philippines it's from January to May and so I jumped in after a year of recovering um Philippines, I'm sure we'll get to it later, but was a very unique experience. I loved a lot of it, but it was so different than anything I've ever done or been. Um, and then last year was also um, a tough, tough year for me as well, but not necessarily volleyball wise. So <laughs> I'm curious to see what this year brings. <laughs> It's always a new adventure, to say the least. Yeah. 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 Especially going through all that. And it's like, especially this late into a career, I feel like everybody goes through yes. some sort of injury or some yes. type of like hardship, obviously. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it's crazy. Like when you get to see it from somebody else's perspective, because like I've had my own injuries and uh, like, I know Pete and Callaway super well, obviously. And me and Callaway, when he was trapped over in Romania, I think I spent like 90% of his days playing video games with him, which we talk about a lot. So I heard all of Callaway's issues. I was totally. like this window to vent out. I was his therapist. Yeah. yeah. Unpaid. Yeah. That's how Unpaid. we are with each other. I think. <laughs> yeah. I paid you with my good company. How's that? <laughs> He's like, not enough. <laughs> no, 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 it was just all yeah. shit. It was all rough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely huge just having like one other American there, somebody that understands like your culture, somebody that um, speaks your language fluently. Um, it's huge. I mean, I had two Americans on my team. Um, and I mean, in Germany, people spoke English relatively well, but mm-hmm. I still had to speak a little slower when I was around them if they yeah. wanted to understand. So, yeah, if I had. I could go home and, and my roommates and stuff, just talk to them and kind of just be, it was almost like I was in America, I guess, again. Yeah, so, yeah. definitely. Definitely cute yeah. having that. But. Yeah, I can't imagine not having an American. Like, in Greece, I even had one, at least one. Like, and that and that's one of the reasons why I was like, I want to go to France. I know there's a lot of Americans there. Like, I'm bound to end up with one of them. Yeah. And then <laughs> there were three of us yeah. last year, and then there's three of us this year, so... Nice. Like, don't don't go alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like no for way. sure. Like my biggest tip is like don't go alone. Like yeah. I did Estonia alone and that was okay because they're they're pretty English friendly there. Um mm-hmm. and all the almost all the guys spoke fluent and my coach was finished, so we were speaking English most of the time anyway. Um, because he didn't speak Estonian. But I was really looking forward to playing with the American in Romania and he he oh, dipped and I was like, yeah. I'm not dipping, I'm sticking this out. Yeah. Damn, <laughs> yeah, good for you though. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah. Well, it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> yeah. 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 Life you made happened. it through. <laughs> yeah. So you guys both had um some like injuries, obviously. Like uh, we kind of mentioned it. Brandon brought it up a little bit there as well. But is there any 
thing that you guys like had to tell yourself or what kept you guys motivated to like bounce back and keep playing? Was it just the love for the game or was it kind of like anything more than that? Um, for me, I had kind of just because mentally my year after Greece was, it was just so bad that I kind of decided, you know, like, I don't think I'm going to play anymore. Um, and I actually like got a job, um, and then kind of went through the whole surgery thing, like working and it was kind of in the back of my head, like maybe I'll give it another chance, but I'd kind of, uh, you know, I just wasn't going to play anymore. And then I started coaching club um and just it just wasn't enough for me to be a coach like I just missed any chance I got I was like out there with my 15 year olds playing and I still just felt like I hadn't reached like where I wanted to go and so I was like okay I feel like it can't get any worse than what it was so like I'm gonna just give it another chance because I just feel like if I you know 10 years from now and I look back I'm gonna think uh, like if only I would have just given it one more shot. So um, that's kind of what did it for me, just not really wanting to like miss out on something. Yeah, for me, um, it my my injury happened during a match. Uh, we were playing Stanford at home, and I like came down, classic knee injury, and I just decided afterward that. Uh, like the last time I played volleyball, I was not going to be carried off the court. I didn't like mm -hmm. that feeling. So I was, you know, my plan all along was to play pro right away. And I said, you know what, this is obviously a big lesson for me and something to learn from, but, um, there's, I'm not finished. I wasn't finished. And so it also like was such kind of a blessing in disguise as far as recovery wise, because um, rehab for knee surgeries is brutal and for any injury, I mean, truly it can be really tough mentally. And so having something to like a goal, like essentially just something to grasp onto was really helpful for me. Yeah. But yeah. Man, Jesus. Go ahead, Peter. <laughs> no, I was just saying, I, I can oh. imagine like knee injuries are pretty yeah. miserable. Like I've, I had. Yeah. Did you do your ACL? Yeah, yeah ACL, MCL, meniscus. I did oh, yeah, just blew it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just you were like, hold on. Let's yeah. just go how casual she went about that. She was like, you know, just regular knee injury. Her whole yeah, knee honestly, was like detached from her body. <laughs> it, it's probably well, like the number one serious injury in women's volleyball. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit! All three. Yeah, yeah. The trifecta. Yeah, it was. I wouldn't do it again if I had that <laughs> I, Yeah, I wouldn't wish that on anybody, for real. Like, no. never. It, it's terrible to have to deal with any injuries. But I totally, like, agree with your guys' sentiment of, like, just wanting to go out on your own terms is, like, what's driving me right now. I've, I've just had my second surgery in, in seven or eight months. And it's, wow. like, I just want to try to play pain-free just, like, one time. <laughs> yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I don't know if I'll get there and kind of come to terms with that, but uh, if I can get to a good place where I'm feeling good, I'd love to try to play one more time and just kind of go yeah. out on my own. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, <there> no. <laughs> <laughs> Peter looked like he was ready to say something. Um, but uh, actually, I had a question. So going going back to your guys' recruiting process and everything like that, uh, that's something that we always like to kind of dive into because everybody has such a unique process. Like like you like you were saying, the fact that everybody thinks it's all like this glamour and oh, I got all these offers and all this money, and you're like, it is tough to make a decision when and for women's when you're 15. For us, it's a it's a lot different. I mean, I signed my NLI in July, and then I got to campus in August. So I signed like oh a my month. Gosh. Yeah. Mine like, and that's kind of how it goes in men's. So, and yeah. it's interesting to see, like, especially you guys going to obviously large D ones and with how large the women's volleyball is like, there's like so many schools you guys could go to so many more options than men. So it's like the fact yeah. that you guys were able to land at a high division one, it's even almost even more impressive. So just kind of like a run through of like, how it went or like the weirdness that you guys kind of went through or the things that went through your head? I don't know. <laughs> um, for 
me, like, I just, you know, like, it was, we were getting letters, getting letters, and I just didn't have really anyone that I could ask, you know, what, how do I go about this? So I didn't know that, you know, I'm getting these letters. I should probably like email these people back. Like I just was kind of waiting for that like next step. Um, and for me, like the club I played for, we didn't go to a lot of like uh, big tournaments. So a lot of the schools for me were like SEC, like East Coast schools. Um, but I just had no idea that that is what you were supposed to do. Um, but now, like, if someone asks me recruiting, I'm like, you have to do the work. Like, if there's a school you want to go to, there's so many girls playing volleyball right now. Like, there's so thousands of setters in the U.S. playing club volleyball trying to go play college volleyball. So, like, you need to reach out and kind of, like, sell yourself to them. Whereas when I was going through the recruiting process, I just thought, you know, it's like football. You know, they show up to your high school game and they're like <laughs> – Hey kid, like when you're in eighth grade, like want to come play for me, and I just and it just was not like that. At all. I was like, if they really want me, like they'll come to me, and like that was just not how it was. Um, so yeah, that's definitely one of the things. Like I think with women's volleyball, I had no idea that's how it was for guys, but like we have to do the work because it's there's it's such a big sport. Yeah, for me it was a little different because I'm like just so tall <laughs> like, yeah true, true. Um, i was gonna say when you're six five you kind of sign where you want right. to at least yeah. <laughs> at least somewhere <laughs> yeah so i i do have i think more more of a unique experience compared to like the mass of people um just because of my height i attract attention mm -hmm. but um <laughs> it was like like maggie said just like letters and cards and emails and after every match my coach would be like here are more business cards from schools and like I you know alluded to earlier it took my parents a lot of like come on Casey you can like and to just call a coach I was terrified like I was a sophomore <laughs> in high school um calling these huge universities like right. hey <laughs> And they have so many crazy rules that you have to jump through so many hoops to begin yeah. with. Yeah. Um, so long story short, I like knew that I wanted to stay kind of close to home. So I had my eyes on the Pac-12. I did visit some schools on the East Coast. And now looking back, it's always kind of funny to play the what if. Like, yeah. I got letters from some universities and schools that now I'm like, Casey, what were you thinking? But <laughs> not, I mean, it all happened for a reason, yeah. so. Yeah, I don't want to get anyone in trouble. You mentioned how, like, kind of sticky the recruiting process is and just the hoops that people have to jump through. But I was curious, like, how old were you guys when you first started getting contacted or getting these letters or cards? Uh, ninth grade? Like I said, I was on the YMCA team, so <laughs> it wasn't until... I was a sophomore in high school with my first traveling team, and that's when mm -hmm. I got yeah. it. Yeah. I think yeah, like, I'm just curious. you get, like, camp, camp invitations. Like, ninth grade, oh, yeah. I like, invite you to come to their camp. And then I think 10th grade, you can do unofficial. And then 11th grade, you do official visits. I think it's even okay. senior year. Yeah. yeah. Is yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, that actually, that's a little bit more similar to the guys than I thought it was, other than just, like, there's not really any men's volleyball at the middle school level, and there's, yeah. you know, yeah. a very average amount in high school, especially depending on which state you're in. Yeah. Um, so, like, just most guys aren't, you know, even remotely refined enough to show potential until their junior year, you know? Like, it's like, uh, he looks kind of athletic. He's pretty tall. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we can turn him into a volleyball player. Yeah. <laughs> it's very rarely that there's, like, some polished high school player, especially out of, like, the Midwest or East Coast that's just going to, like, yeah. you know, have all the ball control down and all that stuff. So it, they have to – they kind of have to wait to recruit us because they can't really jump the gun on these – just not yeah. products, but it's kind of a blind especially for guys that. develop later. Yeah, I yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, when, go, go ahead, Kelly. Okay, I'll go. 
I was like five ten my freshman year of high school, and now I'm six foot seven. And that was like I was like six six by the end of my sophomore year. So it's just like yeah, a that's huge growth spurt. Yeah, I was yeah. five five when I started high school, like dead set libero. I didn't want to go anywhere else. And then nobody on my JV team could set a ball. So they were like, all right, you're uh, just going to be a 5'5 five, five setter. And then I graduated <laughs> at 6'2. And when I showed up for my freshman year of college, I was 6'5. So it's like I got three oh inches. Two That's insane, dude, yeah. It's the most obscure. That is so like, cool. I know. I was like pumped. I was like, sweet, 6'2. I was like, I can keep going now. And then when I signed for college, I was like, shit, it ended at 6'2. I was like, damn. And when I showed up and they measured me, they were 6'5. I was like, where did that come from? Like it was, <laughs> it was this so man didn't even know he grew three inches. <laughs> I, I shit you not. I had no idea. I had no, I was like, they were like, oh, how tall like, do you think you are? I'm like, I'm 6'2. They're like, dude, you're not 6'2. I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> that is so funny to me. I, I feel like I was like measuring that. myself every day during my growth spurt. <laughs> Dude, I was also like so clueless my uh, freshman year. Yeah. Like I, I was so clueless. I was just like, "Dude, I'm pumped. I get to play like a sport. This is sick." Yeah. I was so like, like, oh man, I was so innocent. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but for sure, I just like trying to think about like handling where to go to college when I'm 16. I was like, it was enough of a challenge when I was 17, 18. You know, yeah. and. That would be entirely overwhelming to have to yeah. contact some college coach, some grown man or woman, and have an adult conversation with them when you're pretty much a child. Pete, yeah. Pete, what about you? I was actually, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but Peter, like your dad being the legend, Stu Russell, back in the, the 80s Penn State clan, bouncing balls out of the middle, like did Pav like come to you pretty young? Like your dad had to like know Pav and stuff, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. My, my dad knew Pav somewhat. Uh, I think I kind of started talking to him maybe like sophomore year. I, I didn't really start playing like really start until like eighth grade. Um, so actually, I guess I met Pav in eighth grade, but like I wasn't really playing that competitively yet. My like club team was, didn't even like qualify for JOs or anything. We were like doing the club level. Um, but yeah, after that, that was kind of when, um, I started playing more seriously and then, uh, I guess like sophomore year, junior year, um, like Pav and a couple other coaches, I guess, started like talking. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely really, like, for me, for my story, it's like huge having my dad. I mean, he was teaching us like technique and stuff like at a really young age. So oh, that's like, awesome. yeah. I, I like vaguely, or, uh, sorry, vividly remember like, uh, my brother's 10 years younger than me, the youngest one. And I was like probably four or five years old. My dad's like trying to pepper with him. And he's like, just like bending his knees and like jolting up and swinging his arms and like doing all this stuff. And my dad's like, no, stop it. <laughs> Get this out of <laughs> like yelling out of it stuff. So I'm like, all right, well, you know, I'm glad I had that instruction, you know, at yes. the time. So um, it was funny that you guys brought up like all of the, um, the rules like that they have for, for NCAA, like, I was at a tournament, it was like a grass tournament or something, and there was a, the, the Mason coach, Fred Chow, was there, and I had, like, talked to him on the phone or something, you know, like, earlier on, this is, like, probably junior year, and I went up to him and, like, went to say hi to him, and he just kind of, like, waved and just kept walking, and I, like, like, being in high school, like, I'm just, like, saying, like, what did I do? Is he not interested in me anymore? Like, what's happening? Am I, like, I did, like, stuff that I had to explain, like, no, 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 he's not allowed to talk to you right now. <laughs> yeah. That happened to that happened to me one time, and I went into the bathroom and cried because I was like, "Oh my god, they don't want me to hate me." Oh, I they was almost there. allowed to talk to me, but I didn't know. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. I'm over it now, but yeah, not yeah. It. No, you're still salty. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, did you guys have like? Uh, quite a few options and then it like you kind of narrowed it down as it went or were you guys pretty much set on I guess your schools pretty early on no I it took me my college coach was giving me so much snap for this but um I um took me like at least over a year to decide um and that was I was like late in the game I remember college coaches almost being not angry but like where were you, you know, last year? Because they start filling up their rosters yeah. really quick. Um, yes. 
Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, I started kind of to realize that I wanted to stay in the Pac-12. And so um, I narrowed it down to like UW, Oregon, and Wazoo. And took a while and decided Wazoo was the fit for me. Um, for me, I had always wanted to go to the University of South Carolina just because, like, my grandpa went there, born and raised South Carolina, and then, like, they were very, like, you're our top setting recruit for this class, blah, 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 and then I think it was, like, I guess, like, end of my sophomore year, maybe, whenever it's, like, crunch time when you, like, everyone was starting to commit and then they were like, okay, we decided to go in a different direction. So then that's when I was like really scrambling. And I remember like my mom and I like, all right, let's just go through these letters. And I would like email a coach and they'd be like, sorry, like we've already filled this spot for your year. And then I remember her being like, oh, NC State. I was like, ah, what is that? She was like, Maggie, ACC. Like, you know, no idea what NC State was. Never heard of it. In my life. I was like, all right, guess we're going for it. Then like called went on a visit and a week later the coach called me and was like hey like we want to offer your spot and I was just so like I don't have any other options at this point didn't even talk to my parents and I was like yeah sure great and then I was like this is <laughs> right. done. what was it like easy peasy. After that thing? yeah say it again Pete yeah, no, I was saying um what was it like telling your parents after the fact how they like react I remember because the coach was like, you don't want to talk to your parents about this. And I was like, no, I'm good. Like, is this happening? <laughs> and I remember I, like, went downstairs. My parents were watching TV. And I was like, so, like, just committed to NC State. And they just looked at each other. And they are like, wait, what? And I was like, yeah, I just, I just had a conversation with the coach. And they're like, all right, con- congrats. <laughs> Congratulations. And, yeah, but I feel like that's just how I am about most things, though, like, like, I don't think about it. Probably should, but I just go for it. So. <laughs> go with the they're flow, easy going. That's that. fine. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> uh, what about like, uh, so I know you talked a little bit about your first year of pro, Maggie, and like having Scythe and all that and other people from the U.S. Uh, and then Casey, obviously we haven't broken into the Philippines yet, which I'm super excited to hear about. I- <laughs> that experience so just kind of go into like your first year of pro like what it was like your first time being away for like you said you're gone for 10 months you're in a completely different time zone where (laughs) you're waking up and nobody's awake for the next six or eight hours or whatever it is yeah um i i just came like after world university games i went straight from there to greece and so i just came off of this really big high and i was really excited about going to greece especially just because, I mean, that was maybe the third time I was leaving the country in my whole life. And then I remember getting there and it was a lot of like, the team had promised a lot of stuff that just ended up just being false (laughs) when I got there. And I remember my, the other American had been there a couple of weeks before me. And I remember getting to our apartment and I was like, so where's our real apartment? Like, how long are we staying here? And she was like, no, this is where we live. And it was like, (laughs) Like, in Greece, unless you're in, like, one of the bigger cities, it's really, really rural, like, um, like, kind of, like, third world, and so we were in just, I mean, a village, like, straight up dirt roads, chickens running around, abandoned buildings, like, there was barely a grocery store, um, and so that That's what the chickens are for. kind of, huh? I said, that's what the chickens are for. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Uh, but that, so it was just, like, really, like, shocking for me to kind of go and then see all the other girls I played with. Like, they went to Germany and France and all the stuff. And then I was like, okay, well, guess this is where I am for the next 10 months. Um, and it was uh, – I, no one spoke English. Like, our coach didn't speak English. I think we had, like, one girl on our team that spoke English fluently, and that was it. Um, so that was really tough. And then just being so isolated. There's We didn't have a car. It took over an hour on the bus to get to the closest city. Um, and 
So it was just rough. I really like my saving grace that year was our group of like Americans and Canadians that we kind of like just made a group. And I remember if we would have a Sunday off, I was taking a flight from Thessaloniki to Athens just for like 24 hours, just to like be with other people and just like do something fun and get away. Um, flying back the next morning to like go to practice that night. Um, so like, I really think like, it was so nice having that group of people and like we all kind of had like similar situations um and so it was kind of nice to have people to like relate to and just like hang out with and drink and like let yeah. loose so um but yeah it was uh it was tough and then just injury and everything so definitely mentally that year just kind of shot me but what was uh, your guys gym like like was it did you guys have to drive far away or was there one around <laughs> Um, so we would have like, so all the girls on our team lived in the bigger city that was like, it was like a 30 minute drive. So they would swing by, pick us up and the gym, I mean the gym, we could, we could walk there within like, like a 10 minute walk, but you know, um, we don't want to do that. (laughs) Yeah. It gets, it gets old after every day. Yeah. It was like, just, I can't even describe it. Like there's like bullet holes in the window Jeez, like, it was it was bad it was really 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 bad are you like, sure it was grease like were you yeah. like, you no, so much literally wild. i would send i remember like sending snapchats to my friends like walking down the street they'd be like maggie are you in afghanistan like where <laughs> the heck are you yeah like it was it was bad um but yeah it was definitely not and especially now so naive too like at that point I was like whoa professional volleyball like this is gonna be awesome and then like get there and it was just like a major like reality check um but I mean but still like we had tons of fans like I think our bleachers were like three rows like just along one wall and every game it was like completely packed so like that was fun but yeah it was definitely not what I was expecting at all it never really is, but that is another thing that Sife said about just like the fans in Greece are just awesome, and it made yeah. playing a lot of fun there. Yeah, yeah, they're they're int- they're really intense, but I mean it was fun. Like, and our teammates too. Like they just we were talking about that today. Like it's just not the same level of like here. Like they just don't get fired up the way that like we did in college or like how it was in Greece. Um, because they were they're just like such passionate people, anyways. But um yeah we we filled up our teeny tiny gym so <laughs> all right well let's hear it philippines lay it on us okay well now i feel like i have to deliver some like, now yeah we got a lot of hype behind this so make something up if you have to like if it's not extreme <laughs> enough, like come up you with something make really <laughs> oh man um it was so philippines is the third world country So I knew that going into it, but what I didn't know is that volleyball is the most popular thing in the Philippines. Like volleyball players are actual celebrities there. Um, So that was something I was not expecting. And um, it was kind of hard to jump in in that like January like stage where it's like half season or the Philippines. So I kind of, kind of dove head first had no idea I didn't know there was going to be any Americans on my team um but I got there and the people there are amazing like I don't know if you guys have traveled to like Asian countries but they're so hospitable um Filipinos are known for being welcoming and warm and super positive which I totally vibed with I was super happy (laughs) that like it wasn't gonna be like just you know drills and no fun all the time but kind of like we were talking about the whole Dennis Rodman like this is what I'm getting paid for yeah I was getting paid to be like a celebrity there like photo shoots going on like ESPN um like people you we were required to post on social media for to like represent our team like that was a big big deal because all of the matches were on tv and televised and like i said i've i've never 
been felt like a celebrity until I've gotten <laughs> to the Philippines and people like are so pumped just to see an American. They find out that you play volleyball and it's like I've taken a billion pictures that are out there somewhere and I have no <laughs> idea where. Um, mm. But it was like crazy. We practiced on top of a mall. We had no windows in our gym. Like it was just open. Um, so, like the uh, ceiling tiles were falling down. Just absolutely <laughs> terrible conditions. And the humidity was insane. <laughs> like I went through at least three shirts of practice. Um, and it was, the volleyball itself was very different. Um, they have an interesting outlook on practicing and like what you do in your practice. So like I came from a D1 school. We all have been through double A's. We've all done you know, three hour practices twice a day, but this was, um, it was a little, it was insane. We, we played <laughs> Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and in between every single day was a five hour practice of like oh super cardio jumping all the time. So that was really hard for me to, to wrap my mind around because I have a different way of, you know, like thinking. Uh, cardio is not be. my friend. <laughs> so that was really hard to for me to like kind of step back and be like, okay, Casey, you are not a, the coach. You are a foreigner. You can't really do anything about how things are run, but you can just like do your job essentially. And so that was, um, it was, that part was really hard, but there were some really cool things about it and some just, I was so happy to be back in America. <laughs> Okay, uh, two things. One, I the first half of that, I did not expect that to be the start to the Philippine story. Right? That's wild. Like, the fact that you were on ESPN and, like, you said all those pictures, that's absolutely – I would – in no way would I ever expect that to be what you were going to say. I know. Um, but that's <laughs> awesome that it is. Like, now I'm, like, kind of debating. I'm like, maybe I'll look in Philippines. Like, maybe they'll have a men's league. Like, that would be sick. Um and then number two, so five hour practices, that's insane. I feel like after that, that you were like, like when you finished those months from January to May and you came home, did you feel like you were just like strong as hell or did you feel like you were beat up and like went through war? Uh, probably more like I went through war. Okay, I, I mean, thought. <laughs> like, so that was, you know, the first thing I, first season after I had surgery. And so, Jumping on straight concrete for five hours every day was really tough. So um, I've had, I, you know, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing necessarily, but I learned to play with pain and like my, no, my body's limits basically. Um, so I was in shape because I sweat out everything, <laughs> like literally <laughs> just nothing. I would drink so much water, but um definitely just kind of wear and tear more than like really strong did you ever get hit with that moment where you're like like where the hell am i like what am i doing like <laughs> you know because like when you're in like weird or not weird situations like that but when you go from like you said a division one like university where you have a gym that has yeah. a training facility the size of like like yeah apartments and this beautiful right. gym you go to a place where ceiling tiles fall like that's kind of oh my gosh so not I forgot to mention so I had a teammate from America she played at University of Minnesota and her and I actually we did a college national team trip together so we knew each other before but I didn't know she was going to be on the team and so having her there she you know going through the same thing and like you said the difference of going from d1 schools to not having toilet paper in public restrooms we lived in a hotel so we didn't have a kitchen we literally had a mini fridge and so it was that part was really tough like trying to figure out because i'm sure you guys know like nutrition and eating is a big part of athletes huh. lives and so trying to tackle that um was really hard and there was moments where we would be sitting in the car 
And my gosh, remember when we had like ice baths after practice and like <laughs> just all that, or even just like a stove, <laughs> a microwave, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, I lived in a, a, a hotel in Estonia as well. So that's, it's definitely weird living in a hotel. I feel like you can't yeah. really get like comfortable there. No. It, like, it's not awful, but you can't get comfortable. Crazy. It's not your room. <laughs> it's not your house. Yeah, no. Callaway, Callaway had some beef with that manager or whoever it was that like ran the hotel. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> He would, he would, I would uh, talk to him. I, I, so I got deported pissed. from Estonia. You were, you were, <laughs> what? Wait, what? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I got deported from Estonia. Um, not like in a really awful way or anything. It was just like, you know, I was talking with kind of my, our team manager and to, and to his credit, he does a lot of stuff and he's also like really high up in the Euro park company. So he's a really busy guy and I get that. Um, I wish they would be able to like delegate more responsibility. Um, which I, you know, expressed to him, you know, like at the end, we, we left on good terms. Uh, but I, you know, I was like, Hey, what's going on with my visa? Are we, is that like in progress? Or, oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And then all of a sudden it's like, Hey, I've almost been here for 90 days. Um, what's going on with the visa? He's like, Oh yeah. Uh, this week we're going to go. And I, I went to like start the visa application on the 91st day I was there. We went to the police station. Uh, they're like, Oh, you've been here for 91 days, literally 91 days. Like you can't get a visa. And I was like, okay. They're like, maybe we can appeal it. And like, maybe you'll get one. Um, but if that doesn't happen now that we know you're here illegally, you have to leave. (laughs) And I was like, (laughs) I was like, okay, uh, great. And they're like, it actually would have been better if you just didn't show up at all and just stay here. And then, you you know, they would have been like, why have you been here without a visa? But then they would have let me leave. And I was like, great. So I ended up going home, um, which was, you know, it was good and bad. I got to surprise my, my, my family for Christmas, which was really uh, cool. Yeah. Um, and then I got to, um, you know, just be in the U.S. around good people for a while. Uh, not that there's bad people in Estonia, just people I can, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> relate to and stuff. Um, and then it just took a really long time to get my visa ironed out because there was not any communication between uh, the manager and myself. So uh, I didn't get back out there till like the end, near the end of January. And it just felt like I had to start. Again. It was interesting, but again, mm-hmm. it, it's a good story. <laughs> Yeah, I know I know of some people that have been in countries and never gotten a visa the whole time they were there. Um, it's crazy. And I know some people that have been deported too, so <laughs> you're not alone. <laughs> the, setter, happens, man. the setter from our team just got deported like three weeks ago. Oh, so man. yeah. So he we had we had like two setters that were here and then we had one from Canada and he played on the team last year because of Corona didn't go back to Canada and just stayed here and like, just didn't tell anybody. And then, so he went to apply for his visa this year and they were like, well, you, you've been here the whole time. Like you're not allowed to do that. And then he tried to appeal it. And, uh, all like a bunch of guys on the team would like kind of make fun of him a little bit for it, like joke with him. And one of the guys it was after one of our matches was like, we were making a joke about going home. And one of the guys was like, well, we know he's going home. Like, but we hadn't heard anything yet. Oh. We hadn't heard anything yet. Two minutes later, he announces, he's like, hey, guys, so I'm getting deported. I leave tomorrow to go back to Canada. And it was a nightmare. And the guy that made that joke was me. So it was even worse. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even say the joke to his face. I said it. And then one of the kids was like, oh, Brandon said this and, like, called me out. And I was like, dude, yeah, shut threw up. you right under that bus. It was terrible. It was so bad. <laughs> Oh, that was so uncomfortable. Yeah. Brandon, where'd you go? Yeah, that was... You know, <laughs> he just faded out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there's yeah. this weird thing that happens oh. in my house. Every time, every single night at like 1040 something. Okay, it's 36. It's between like 30 and 45. And it was 10 and then daylight, or it was 11 and then daylight savings made it 10 or whatever. Every single night, there's like a sleep timer. but 
it mm. wasn't ever turned off. So every night it just turns off at this time. And then I have to turn <laughs> it, it's all the lights in the whole house, everything, everywhere. That's so, weird. so like I would be Do in the shop. No, no. So right now I'm living with like a sponsor family. Um, and then I'm actually moving out in like a day or two to go to my apartment. So nice. yeah, it's been, it's been interesting, but the family is super nice and like the house is great and it's been awesome. And I'm actually kind of wish I could stay and not go to the yeah. apartment, but also the apartment setup's great too. So like, I really don't have any complaints about my living situation, oh, yeah. Oh, that's nice. yeah. but sleep timer. Oh, that's is so nice, the- Brandon. So lucky. <laughs> nice for you <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh <laughs> uh, <laughs> i'm just jealous all right <laughs> no we have uh, another, we have a good go setup ahead. this year i think last yeah. last year we they put us in like a legitimate trailer park for the first what was it like month, month and a half yeah. like a month um so, and then we moved into a house and it was really nice. But yeah, when, like my first like month there, like it was legit a trailer park. So yeah, there was three of us yeah. in like a tiny Dang. little restaurant. All right, would you, would you take the trailer or the hotel? Ooh. I love hotels. Ooh. I would, I would go hotel. Honestly, <laughs> I would do trailer because they have a kitchen. I can't yeah. like literally... It was rough. I'm like, I like I hotels too, hotel but thing. I don't like living in hotels. It's a very different thing. Yeah. I made that thing my home. No, I was I walking like around in it. socks I... all the time. <laughs> my mom. Uh, oh, no. man. Hotel <laughs> And then, like, when, but when I say hotel, I'm t- a three star hotel in the Philippines. Not yeah. like, let's go to Fair. the Hilton. Fair. You know? Not yeah. the right. luxurious Estonia hotel that Callaway was in. Um, Dude, the, the killer was there was a super like a five star hotel like connected to the, the hotel I was staying in. We had like plush bathrobes, like these that. plasma screens, like yes. heated bathroom floors and stuff. And I'm like, huh, that'd be cool. <laughs> so my team in the Philippines was like a real estate company. So they owned they owned like malls and hotels, aka where I was staying. And they owned this beautiful hotel with like a rooftop pool. And I'm like, why are we in Stradella when <laughs> we are in, we could be in this beautiful hotel, but not all money. So. Especially if you guys are like looked at as celebrities, you think they would have put you in the nice one. Right? right. I should have played that card. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a missed opportunity. Yeah. Um, so actually, I just thought of this, that we should do this, but we did. So today me and Peter did like a little Instagram live thing. I don't know if you guys like saw it or are following the account or anything, but we did like our top four arenas that we've played in visiting arenas. So not like home arenas. So I thought it would be cool to like see from your guys perspective from like high school, college or professional. What are like the top four favorite like places to play? This is really on the spot. So don't worry. You can take a second. It doesn't have to be. Um, okay, I can say, so when we played Duke, we got to play in Cameron Indoor, so that was really cool. Um, and then when Taiwan World University Games was, like, just big arena, packed, um, same with the Vietnam trip, same thing. Um, <clears throat> trying to think, I don't know. It, all the ACC schools were pretty small um georgia tech was just really tiny tiny gym impossible to play in like just they would win every home game just because it's so loud in there like i remember (laughs) during timeouts our coach would have to like we'd run in the hallway really quick just to like so we could kind of hear what he's saying and then like go on the court couldn't even bother trying to like communicate so that was always, like, fun because it was, like, part of the challenge. It was, like, okay, how are we going to handle Georgia Tech's gym? Like, it's going to be so <laughs> loud. Um, but I think definitely Cameron Indoor is, like, definitely my favorite just because it's so historic. Um, in college, we played um, Wisconsin in the tournament at Wisconsin in the second round. And we played Nebraska at Nebraska in the second round. And their gyms were yeah. freaking packed and like 
I I can't remember how many people were there, but it was I think well I don't know about the Philippines, but it was at least definitely in college. Like I've never played in a in a stadium like so full and just so loud. And the fans I think both years were so just like nice to everyone and they just appreciated mm-hmm. good volleyball so even if we won the point it would still be like you know oh great good, good job. job you know very <laughs> sportsmanlike um and then yeah the philippines was a big big arena and then um this isn't my favorite arena but this year our our, our, uh, yeah. our little town yeah. gets, gets um quite a few fans and so it can be fun just yeah we have like a big gym and they do we do a whole like intro with like the lights and lights and they like announce us and it's like spotlights it's pretty cool yeah it's fun it's real dramatic yeah (laughs) it's a lot but what about you guys i know y'all did it on the podcast but i thought you guys did an awesome job by the way brandon and peter Uh, there's a few gyms i kind of forgot about um like Hawaii was awesome to play in, uh, for sure. It's just like incredible atmosphere. It's like an amazing facility. Lighting's great, cool court. Um, so that's for sure one of my favorites. Not to mention it's in Hawaii, which is paradise. Uh, mm-hmm. Long Beach Pyramid, for sure. Another one that's just like oh such gosh, a cool to play, play there, especially yeah. Yeah, for like, I feel like <laughs> setters and outside tra- Yeah, I know, it's awesome. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's like also really trippy it's like all these like like i don't know like just like hexagon figures going all the way up into the the pyramid it's very like weird and kind of hard to, especially if you're like a jump server again like hitting high balls on the yes. pan, which i'm a middle i didn't have to do that um but i you know i just can imagine it'd be really difficult to do um and then i think even though it was kind of a pretty bitter thing uh pete's senior year we were playing loyal in the final four and i think like to this day and in my entire volleyball career that was the most like electric environment i've ever been in like it was absolutely deafening in there everyone was going crazy super tight five game match they pulled it out and then went on to win the national championship but it was for it's for sure one of my favorite gyms to play in dude in that match i i don't think i'll ever forget this man like there was a time, I think Loyola actually called a time on. I think we pulled it within one, maybe like 10 9, something like that. And like, I we started like waving, waving our flag around or whatever. And like, the Penn State crowd was like, going nuts. But then freaking like the Loyola Wolf or whatever brings out their flag and like the rest. It must have been like 65. Oh, it's just probably. swallowed our Yeah. Like, this, is, this is nuts. I was just looking around, just like, <laughs> but yeah, that was probably, that was the loudest. Uh, yeah, I, I like instantly too. got chills. Not because I was like intimidated. Yeah. I was just like, "This is crazy." I was like, "This is so <laughs> fun." Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It was so a cool. blast. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there's a there's a bunch of cool gyms, but. So so funny story about Long Beach. First of all, the we played them in a tournament, a preseason tournament. And then the next, some player knew Drake, and he came to their game, and we were no all way. super mad. Like, so that was one. And then you know, you were talking about like the weird, like the shape and how the just it's distortion. My middle teammate was chasing after a ball, and it was like trying to like send it over third contact, and I'm not sure like what happened. She looked up. And like completely like the opposite direction, <laughs> and it literally became like a verb for us. Like don't don't long beach it. Like that was <laughs> whenever someone would like miss uh, a whiff a free ball, it would be like ooh she long beached. It's so <laughs> weird. Yeah, it's like I don't know. It's almost like. I remember playing baseball as a kid at night and just like seeing a fly ball in the outfield with the lights. It was like oddly very hard to track against like the black sky. And it's obviously a different background in in Long Beach, but it's kind of a similar effect, I feel like. Yeah, for sure. That's so ongoing battle in volleyball. The lighting (laughs) and the ceiling, like it's so ironic when you like look at gyms, especially when you're like a kid. 
or when you're younger, you're like, man, look at how cool the court is and all the seats. And it's like when you get older and especially in professional, the first thing I do when I walk into a gym, I'm like, all right, where the hell are the lights? Like, what's going to block yeah. serving? Yeah. How high is the like, ceiling? <laughs> yeah, how high is the ceiling? Where yeah, are the lights? Yeah. What the hell is going on? What's going to distract me? Because it really, like, oh, my gosh. It really does. There was one ball that we were – we just had a match, and I got set, like, on the outside and completely lost the ball. Absolutely lost it. I was just hoping to make contact, and I ended up, like <laughs> – basically spatching it to the back corner and got like the luckiest kill ever and our setter came down and he was like like do you need it up a little bit i was like dude i don't know what the hell i need i was like i didn't see that at all i was like you're I so I, I was like you're so lucky like i hit the ball i was like for all i know it was perfect and he was like okay perfect it, it was so it was so ridiculous uh, yeah. Another thing I wanted to bring up, um, kind of going back to the last topic of playing overseas, um, was that you mentioned, I think it was um, Maggie, you mentioned that, like, the, just the, like, energy of your team is very different playing pro than in college. Like, I feel like in college, you're playing for your team. It's, like, all your best friends that you're spending all your time with, and it's just, like, you want to do so well for each other, for your school, and, like, what you're representing. And like you want to do well overseas, is like, but it's just it's a job and it's such a different yeah. feeling. I don't know. It's like yeah. you kind of more like you have to play kind of selfish a little bit, which is tough because yeah, I really don't like to play that way. Uh, 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 like I think once a day, just like okay, it's not the same as college. I'm not like representing something bigger than myself. Which, like, you are, but it's just, it's not that same kind of feeling. Yeah, like, we're all here for ourselves, and, like, um, it's, like, hard to kind of find that same type of motivation. So, like, every day I'm kind of yeah. like, okay, like, what is, what am I doing here? What is my purpose? Like, what's going to motivate me? Because it's just not, it's really just not the same. Uh, and yeah. we, and especially, like, a lot of teams have a big, can have a big age draft. Like, we have mm-hmm. so, a 36-year-old, yeah. and we have an 18-year-old. And so we think about all the time, like these 18, 19 year olds, like we want to, we want to grab them and like throw them into university and like have them grow and get that experience because it is so different. And Mm -hmm. I don't want to speak for you, but like, I can't imagine what kind of player I would be if I hadn't learned, like you said, to play for a team, like for each other and not necessarily Mm -hmm. like. I got to get 20 points. Otherwise I'm not going to get my bonus or like, yeah, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. It's crazy how that it seems little, like you're thinking, Oh, they're professionals. Like they're going to be the best team ever, mm-hmm. but not necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like that the pro environment kind of fosters this, like, you know, like individuality that you need to just worry about yourself. There's a lot more things that are out of your control and it's, you know, you, you kind of learn to, put your head down and just work hard and just control yeah. what you can control yeah that's definitely like a big like <laughs> yeah, yeah. last year there was just so much like all right it is what it is like that yeah. just became like our saying like all right well it is what it is nothing we can do about it now like <laughs> Roll with the punches. and then we'd like limit ourselves like all right we get one more time to talk about this and then it's no more and like just let it go we can't do anything about it like no more yeah but, for sure. So yeah. Peter and I are cracking up because roll with the punches is something our head coach in college said all the time when Shea would just hit the fan. It's like, you know what? <laughs> just roll with the punches, guys. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Callaway, was that the year? I think you were, I think it was our my senior year. Maybe it was before, but. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, uh, wait, uh, yeah. In yeah. the middle of like February, and we're like in north northeastern Pennsylvania, at like 10:30 at night, and our bus breaks down, and we're like stuck on the oh, side, yeah. of the road. just like <laughs> total like freezing. It passes. All right, guys, roll with the punches. <laughs> uh, our bus driver's like, I got the funnel, but I don't have the paperclip. I'm like, yo, you should not be fixing a bus with a paperclip. <laughs> I was like, what is happening right now? Uh, That's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah oh man i love the stories that hardships bring but <laughs> not at the time but later not at the time but, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the other thing i wanted to bring up as far as like one of the most difficult things at least for me um like more so in romania was 
sense. Having literally no idea what anyone was talking about 95% of the time. Like in a That'd match, during a huddle, not a single word in English. I'm like, what are you guys talking about? Don't worry, it's not about you. I'm like, I'm playing. Like, whatever you're talking about, whether it's strategy or, what, you know, like, I would love to know because then, you know, we'll be on the same page and then we'll play better together. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's not like that. I'm like, ah, okay, all right. I guess I'll just figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, well, and the, so in Greece, like, none of my team spoke English. And, like, it was kind of nice because our coach was just wild. And, like, he would just scream at me every day, like, screaming at me in the games and practice. And I'm like, bro. I have no idea what you're saying. Like, just like why? Like, why do you think I know what you're saying? But like, I guess you just need to let off some steam. So like, that was kind of nice because like, I just could let it go because I had no idea what you're saying. But here we'll be like, okay, they definitely just said the word American. Yes. So like, <laughs> there's said something about us. Yes. Like, should we yeah. ask them or like, yeah. they'll like say our position and. We at least can pick up on those words, and we're like, all right, did you hear that? Like, they just said, like, center. Yeah, yeah. I, I swear, like, everyone will talk shit on you over there, or at least you'll think it, and then, like, you can't, because, like, you yeah. know, you, you don't know their language at all, and then, like, some people for sure will know what you're saying, so it's just like, yeah. oh, man, I, yeah. I wish I could say what you're saying about me to you. <laughs> yeah. And it they're, is, they're like, pretty... it's, like, right in front of your face, like, even Casey, yeah. I, the other day, I won't say, but... She, what, we were sitting there after practice, and she was like, someone just said Casey. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you yeah, just never know. Could be good, could be bad. They're pretty yeah. good at English over here in Denmark, where I'm at. And uh, we right. had this joke going. I was like, because, like, of course, when they get fired up and passionate and, like, I'm now one of two who only speak English on the team. And some of the guys on our team are pretty good at English. Some aren't and struggle a lot, but they'll like just jump into Danish out of nowhere and they'll just kind of fire it off. And then I make this, like, there was always this joke because they would do exactly that. It would rattle. I just hear like, blah, 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 blah. And then my name. And I was like, what yeah. the hell? I was like, I'd call him out. I was like, you guys got to stop doing that. Like, I know you're talking about me. Like my name's not in Danish. Like, yeah. I understand yeah, that. I that. And then, yeah. And then we'll be like, it, like Cowley was saying, we're in the middle of a match and we'll be like talking strategy or something intense happens. And then like, they're trying to find the English word and then they just cut to Danish and they just go on a rant. And I'm like, all right, I'll figure it out. And then yeah, this guy talked. didn't need that happen with the Nets. It's nuts. And this guy talked shit to me through the net in Danish. And I, I had no idea in our match <laughs> just the other day. I had no idea what he said, obviously. And when I came back, I was like, I don't know why, like the guys on the team, like, I don't know why they were so pissed at you last night. I was like, I don't know that. I was like, the one guy talked shit to me. They're like, well, what did he say? I was like, I, I don't know. It's Danish. Like, yeah. I don't know what to yeah. tell you. I could is make that, up. But what did he say? I was going to say, in men's volleyball, is that normal to like talk shit through the net? Or that's yeah, so it's, embarrassing. It's pretty common. <laughs> it's kind of, yeah. <laughs> every, I think uh, every team has at depends. least one. It depends. Yeah. Every it depends on player, it depends on the player for sure. Everybody's got that one like it's almost like hockey. Like I feel like, which is ironic to compare men's volleyball to hockey. But, like every <laughs> hockey team has a goon that just like goes and does the fighting. I feel like most men's teams has like that one idiot on the team that just goes and talks trash. Yeah, like we, hard. I know in my university team we had a kid that used to like stir some shit. Shout out to like Ian because he was a madman. But that kid would literally he he one time got subbed in to talk shit. I kid you not, he yeah, got I subbed thought. in in the front row and like yeah, got in people's yeah, heads. Really. It's insane. It's so funny. It's so funny. That's so uh, interesting. My, I've always wondered my that. policy is my policy is I won't start it. But if you start like going after me, I will for sure go after you. Like yeah, twice as fair. hard, man. I'm, I'll just start baiting them to hit at me as <laughs> much as I can, which is yeah. great because I I like to block. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, if I can get I them to hit at me instead of a center, like, that's a win. Yeah, women's is more just like the look. Like, <laughs> like if you're kind of like pissed at someone that's been like shitting on you all game, and then you block them, you kind of like linger and stare, and then the stare down. Or whatever. Like, yeah, I love like I don't know if I said this, but I'm a hitter in case you didn't know. Um, and I love when like you're looking across in like across the net. And you know their blockers are staring at you and like, okay, where is that bitch? Or, <laughs> I, mean, I guess I shouldn't say. No, oh, you're good. But, it's okay. Uh, no, yeah, you're good. <laughs> bleep me out. And I love, I like that because I, 
we make eye contact with each other, and then it gets you like fired up. But I like, you think you can block me? Probably, probably can. <laughs> probably can, but yeah. hopefully not. <laughs> I feel like they definitely let more slide overseas than they did in college, though, or like high school. It's pretty frowned upon, probably, especially in yeah. high school. I feel like if anybody even turned to themselves and just like let off steam, I've seen red cards for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in college, college, in university, they film you and like they zoom in so close mm-hmm. to your face. So yeah. I was always you like guys, <laughs> yeah. oh, not us, but you guys. <laughs> my mom would always be like, Maggie, maybe you should find some new words. Like we all can see what you're saying. Yeah. And I'm oh, like, totally. Well. <laughs> like, uh, like I'm just like it's competitive, saying. competitive juices. Yeah. yeah, like Kelly was saying, you guys definitely in college had cameras more zoomed in. It was a lot more professionally shot. But there were a few in like in our in the NCAA that I never knew were like so professionally shot. They were like zoomed in like this close to your face, like right here. Yeah. But we didn't know because that wasn't normal for us. So like we were just free reign. Then we'd go back and we'd yeah, see it like, on YouTube, and like it was so clear what we were saying. Yeah. Like, oh it yeah. Was bad. Yeah. Yeah. No regrets, though. I mean, yeah. that reminds me of a, another good Long Beach story with Connor Curry, who's our libero, and we used to call him the leaky tire because when he'd be going, when he'd be going for like a pancake, he'd be like, Fuh. you know, he'd drop, <laughs> drop the f bomb. It was like dead quiet in Long Beach, and it's just like this super long, like, Fuh. and then he just finished off the word, and the refs like, come on, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you can't. You can't do that. Yeah, yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, well, uh, I think that we're getting close to the ending time here, but uh, wanted to give you guys an opportunity. We do this kind of at the end of all of this. We do like a little shameless plug kind of thing. If you guys have any accounts that you want to like plug in at the end or any teams or anything, we do it at the end of every one. So we'll let you guys kind of do that and closing remarks or anything else you want to say. Oh. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I guess I have to shout out Matt for uh, setting this up for us. So Matthew Cipher, thanks for the the hookup. Um, yeah. I don't know. Our volleyball team this year is Lay Lubes. Yeah, so, Sanji Lay Lubes. Um, yeah, I don't really. Yeah, I mean you can follow us on Instagram. Yeah. We're not that interesting, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm no, sure there's plenty of people. Well. There might be some people that like this show that would be really interested in following you guys. I don't, I don't know how many people watch this. So, <laughs> so like, oh yeah, tons of people want to see. They look up to you guys. They do. Yeah. I think I'm Casey underscore shoe. So if you have fun, try to find me. Yeah. <laughs> I got them. So it. don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll put it in at the end. Don't worry. Perfect. You guys don't have to do that boring work. But uh <laughs> All right. Well, uh, again, we want to thank you. And yeah, of course, shout out Matt Seifert, uh, who was on our episode two for hooking this up. You guys were awesome. We were super happy to have you guys on. Super interesting players, awesome stories. And uh, thanks again for coming on. Thanks, thanks for having us.